but I'm asking you specifically how many of you in this room would say I know this is my mission how many of you can do, can do that 12 people okay fair enough 12 people in this room know what exactly you are supposed to do with your life and the rest of you please don't be in any way feel sorry for yourself I'm so glad you're here so these are places where God brings you out from the normal routine in life to speak into your life so that through all the fun that you're having you'll also ponder you'll also think okay what am I doing here the Lord is trying to speak to you and give you a very clear clarity about what your particular mission is so today we're going to use the fine-tune button to make sure that this is exactly what God has called me for and will somebody say amen to that amen the day you find your mission 50% of your life is already on track because everything depends upon what God has called you for a mission must always have a message for example I'm going to quote somebody as an example in the Bible John the Baptist you know who John the Baptist is right so they asked John the Baptist who are you who are you what did John Baptist say can anybody tell me what John the Baptist said in response to the question when somebody asked him who are you yes he's you know what he said he quoted I'm going to quote verbatim from my Bible he said I'm the voice of the one so John the Baptist the, he says I am the voice of the one in other words when you have the voice you carry a message and this message is called the gospel I'm sure all of you know what it is but it'll be interesting for us to just quickly go through it very briefly and then explain certain things to you so what is the message it is called the the message is the gospel the mission must all have a voice and that voice that message is called the gospel so the, now the question is what is the gospel because whatever that you're doing in the ministry your main agenda is to proclaim this gospel to the nations because in Matthew's gospel chapter number 28 Jesus said go into the world mark chapter 16 verse 17 onwards he said the same thing he says go into the world go and proclaim this message is what is this gospel all about all right so in Matthew's gospel chapter 28 verse 19 onwards I'm going to quote what Jesus said to give us the content of the gospel message he says go therefore and make disciples of all the nations will somebody say all the nations so in other words you are called for what all the nations different places and he said go number one he started by saying go will everybody say go is it very difficult to understand that word go I think that's one of the easiest words to be understood yet so very misunderstood we are supposed to carry this message to where he sends us so he says go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit so jesus told us to baptize people and in this paracamps we have baptized a few people right verse 20 teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you and I lo I am with you always even to the end of the age please tell your neighbor I am not alone in this gospel proclamation tell somebody I am not alone in this gospel proclamation what does it mean Jesus said I am with you is that a good news he's with us through the power of his spirit all right mark chapter 16 verse 15 15 again the same word he says go into all the world and preach the gospel somebody say preach the gospel and so as people who serve the lord our mandate given to us by a resurrected savior is to go first of all where to go that is your mission he will tell you where to go so once he says go you go into that place and the Bible says you preach the gospel 
to every creature so what is my job preaching the gospel in other words i must be able to speak today one of the greatest fears of people you know you know what it is what is the greatest fear of man one of the greatest fears of man huh death is one of them you're right if you said death death is one of them there are three major fears first fear is the fear of death what will happen after i die by and large number two uh, the fear of the future the unknown uh, what to do tomorrow i don't know how things are going to be the third fear in, interestingly is public speaking that's one of the greatest fears jesus is going to the world and preach the gospel yet we are a group of people majority of us who will have a little fear of standing in front of people and speaking how ironic it is ah, so the greatest fear that you must conquer is public speaking so he says go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature and then it says in verse 16 he who believes and is baptized will be saved but he who does not believe will be condemned and so your job and my job is to preach this gospel and the work of the holy spirit is to do the rest of it all right why don't you preach the gospel oh what if he doesn't believe that is not my job my job is to preach the gospel the rest of the work is whose work the holy spirit will do his work so, so we must understand the context and the content of this message all right let me give it to you first corinthians chapter number 15 verse number one this is the apostle paul speaking verse one moreover brethren he says i declare to you the gospel somebody say the gospel the god the word gospel is translated eugalion e u a g g e l i o n it, it means good news glad tidings and so let's examine this eugalion or the good gospel he says i declare to you the gospel which i preached to you which you also received and by which you stand so this is power of the gospel is enormous can you read for me as a reference romans chapter 1 verse number 16 and somebody read for me please he says i am not ashamed of the gospel of christ for it is a power of god unto salvation to everyone that believes to the jew first and then to the gentiles what is the power of god the gospel can somebody shout the gospel if i ask you what is the power of god the apostle paul says the power of god is the gospel hallelujah you know whenever we think of the power of god we talk about you know various demonstrations of the spirit's power which is amazing praise god healings and deliverances that take place but the apostle paul says the message that you carry inside you and when you proclaim this message it is the power of god will you say amen to that amen. hallelujah declare this gospel it the power of god is manifest let's examine the gospel for i delivered to you first of all that which i also received that number one what is the gospel christ died for our sins what is this gospel message number one christ died for our sins it's a lot of information in those few words the question is number one why should christ die what's the answer for that for our sin so we have to ask ourselves what is sin but the primary sin the bible talks about is non-obedience to god that is sin transgression the lord told adam and eve do not eat of the fruit of the tree when adam and eve got together and said we will we will eat of the fruit of the tree they didn't kill somebody they didn't murder anybody they didn't drink they didn't booze obviously all this was not available in the garden of eden but for all points of argument what was sin sin is breaking god's law when god says don't do and you do it it becomes transgression it simply means lord 
I am able to handle life on my own. I do not need your help. And the wages of sin is what? Romans 3.23 For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Can read also with me my friend. Romans chapter 6 and verse 23. The book of Romans chapter 6 verse number 23. For the wages of sin is death. Somebody had to die. And so the wages of sin is terrible. Somebody had to die. And that's the good news. You know what is the good news? All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. If I sin, what is my punishment? Death. So what is death? The body dies. Now what happens when you are separated from God? It is called spiritual death. You know, I have a phone right now. It's a working phone. But if I switch it on, I don't get signal. My phone is alive but dead. Because it is not connected to any tower. So imagine uh, the greatest death is alive. Breathing, dressing up well, perfume, everything good. But we are not connected to God. That is called spiritual death. And so Jesus had to come and die for us. 2 Corinthians 5.21 For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. But he who knew no sin, Jesus, he was made sin for us. Why? That we can put on the righteousness of Jesus and be reunited with our relationship with our heavenly father. Will somebody say Amen. If you understood it or not, I don't know. But if you take the time to understand it, this is a beautiful transaction. We lost our relationship with God. Jesus died for us on the cross and he re-established our relationship back with our Heavenly Father. Therefore today, just by placing your trust on what Jesus did on the death, burial and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, by just believing this message, we are reunited. And if this is the proclamation of the gospel message to a hungry and a dying world. And therefore, it is too good news. That is why it is called the gospel. Verse 4. He was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Somebody say amen to that. So this is the good news. What is the good news? This, just imagine... I believe on the finished work of Jesus and I am saved. I am saved. Saved from what? From the penalty of sin which is death. And what is death? Death is carrying your own sin and rejecting Jesus and going to an eternal and perpetual hell. And that's good news. And imagine the Lord wants every single one of us, our dimensions of ministry may be different. But the main gospel message has to be uttered from your lips irrespective of ministry that you are doing. Jesus Christ. Very quickly I'm going to give you reasons why the gospel is important. The gospel is solid. S-O-L-I-D meaning it can be trusted. It is solid in its content and its conviction. If you, look, if you notice the words I read from the Apostle Paul, the book of 1 Corinthians 15, you will notice every single word says according to the scriptures. It says according to the scriptures. According to the scriptures. Scriptures prove that Jesus Christ is of indeed a fact and not a fiction. The convictive power of Jesus Christ is proven by history. The world knows about Jesus Christ. We are not believing some fairy tale. That's why I said the gospel is solid in its content. Jesus Christ truly walked the shores of Galilee 2,000 years ago. Paul says in verse number 6, after that he was seen over 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain to the present, but some have fallen asleep. After that he was seen by James and by all the apostles. So 500 people plus 12 apostles plus two more, but more than 500 people saw Jesus. So we are not believing some story, my friend. You know when you were talking about atheism, you know people who don't believe in God, every time they write a check or every time they look at the date in the calendar, 
whether they like it or not they're verifying that Jesus was alive you know why Jesus was the historical figure who divided history into AD and BC even an atheist will write checks and he's validating Jesus Christ so the gospel is solid in its content because Jesus Christ who you worship is a historical figure he's not from somebody's mind and imagination so your faith must be strong and remember 500 plus people saw him after he was alive you can cheat one or two people you cannot cheat 500 people that's why the tomb of Jesus Christ is empty in Israel I see these authentication of facts from different zones which helps me believe number two reason why the gospel needs to be proclaimed this is very important angels cannot proclaim the gospel or in other words angels have not been commissioned to preach the gospel so imagine an angel just floating across the continents and declaring Jesus is Lord what will happen the whole of nations will turn to Jesus but what did Jesus want us to do he made us custodians of the gospel we trusted us because I only answer I can give you as to why is because we are his children we are his he is our father and I believe that's the whole reason he gave it to us he says you are my children I give you my greatest responsibility of taking the gospel to the nations who you and me not an angel and angels are help they help us to proclaim the gospel but primarily we are custodians of the proclamation of the gospel through our lips somebody by the name of John Scott he says the church is under orders evangelistic inactivity he said is disobedience evangelistic inactivity is disobedience in other words we and I you and I are mandated to carry this gospel praise the Lord the power of Christ is in the gospel the dying world needs to hear about this message so whatever God has called you for tomorrow foundational message is the gospel message so if I believe on the death burial and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ I am saved okay I'm just going to give you one quick instant from the Bible and then we will close the book of John's gospel chapter number four the plan of Jesus was to go through Samaria uh, long story short he comes to this woman and the Bible says in verse number seven a woman of Samaria came to draw water and Jesus said to her give me a drink what did he ask her for water but we have to come up with divine God given ideas to proclaim this message to the hurting world we need to use a lot of common sense in situations that we are in right now we have to use a lot of wisdom and a lot of common sense so what did Jesus do he said to her give me a drink verse 9 you are a Jew why do you ask me because I'm so called in the untouchable category and she says for Jews have no dealings with Samaritans you see the Lord Jesus Christ always spoke on common ground don't straight away take off and bombard them with the gospel find something common and then begin to work on that he was compelled a divine compelling for you to go and do what God has called you to do he was compelled and he by the way you know Jesus Christ broke the minimum of three Jewish laws by visiting this one woman because Jews had nothing to do with Samaritans he broke certain protocols to meet this woman first of all she was a Samaritan woman had he drunk water from that pot it is unclean and so basically he broke three laws he connect he used water as a common substance or a common subject of connection he used the natural to climb to the spiritual and he says water then he said I'm the one who can give you water and you will never thirst again he climbed from a very natural standpoint to a spiritual standpoint and that I, that I think is amazing communication C again is the word cure C-O-R-E he gave her the cure for what she was looking for and today it's easy to proclaim the gospel because people are in need they need a cure either they need physical healing of their bodies or they need healing of relationships or one of the reasons when people are really desperate is they're looking for peace 
financial crisis lot of needs but when you present this gospel you have the the power in the gospel to meet those needs in the name of Jesus so it's easy to kind of proclaim the gospel because everybody is looking for a certain cure and finally the letter C the conclusion let me give you the conclusion in the book of John's gospel chapter 4 28 now she encounters the living Jesus and Jesus tells introduces himself to her as the Messiah and the Lord the woman then left her water pot what was what did she come to do she came to collect water am I right? right and so she came to collect water but now what did she do she left her water pot in other words what you think is most important in your life you see once you encounter Jesus will take second step the first step would be I've met the master I want to follow him I want to become the messenger of the great message of the gospel of Jesus Christ so the Bible says she left her water pot and what did she do she went into the city I like that the woman came at 12 o'clock noon to avoid all the people from the city now where is she going into that city there has been a radical transformation you see if you really have been encountered by the power of Jesus if you truly whatever you think is most important in your life will go second what is most important in your life will will come first and what's the most important thing being the messenger of the gospel of a Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will you say amen Malaysian Airlines. I was working with Malaysian Airlines as their head of the airport operations in Bangalore City a lot of privileges to travel abroad and all that was was good then this when the Lord told me to step out of the airline company so I declared with my mouth this is going to be my last year and so people said don't be a fool if you quit the airline company who's going to take care of your family right my wife is right here and my, my sunshine is here and so my question who's going to take care of them plus two more children but who called us out is the voice of God if the Lord calls you out you better obey what he said and so I left the airline company and stepped out into full-time ministry and things happened in such a way that it was it was very easy for me to come out and since that time I am into full-time service so I fully understand when the Bible says the woman left a water pot my most important thing in life at that point of time though I love the Lord I had to go to work and come back but the Lord did a transformation I had to leave behind the Malaysian Airlines job and serve the Lord on a full-time basis and the Bible says she went into the city so there is a place of sacrifice there's something that you need to give up to apprehend that something which is invaluable that is to serve the Lord the Bible says the woman left a water pot and went into the city and she said to the men she went to the men straight away and said listen come and see a man who told me all these things that I have ever done could this be the Christ so they went out of the city and came to him her life was not very good but she became a great evangelist she went to the city spoke to the men and she used what I call the power of influence and they said okay if you say so let's check it out for ourselves they went out of the city and came to him many of the Samaritans in that city not in that street in that city because of who one woman one insif insignificant Samaritan woman who had a bad reputation but had a very genuine encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ she goes into the city influences the men to Jesus many of that city believed in him because of the word of the woman who testified he told me all that I ever had and verse 40 says so when the Samaritans had come to him they urged him to stay with them and he stayed there two days and many more believed because of his word did you understand the whole spectrum of this message one woman brought the whole city to Jesus and they were personally touched what did she do proclaimed the gospel this is Jesus the Savior lift up your hands right now say Lord as you've called me I want to be a person to 
proclaim this gospel message to the nations hallelujah 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 we pray in the name of jesus there'll be an unction on their lives this evening that the anointing of the holy spirit will come upon them right now that they will carry this burning lord fact that jesus rose again from the dead nothing in this world could put him down he rose again from the dead defeating satan hell and the grave and he rose victorious and we are talking about a resurrected christ and the message of the gospel is jesus lives and even as these hands and hearts are lifted up lord we commit them into your hands father you take charge of their lives father we pray even as they step out from this place and continue to further on in whatever you have called them to be i pray this gospel message will be etched in their hearts forever and they'll be able to find opportunities lord to share this amazing message to the nations of the world that you take them to we want to decree a blessing upon them in the name of the lord hallelujah